YouTube, we are in the top eight plus grand finale and top deck list. This is on the day of the new pack release. Transaction rollback, we have Earthbound, we have Testina, we also have Resonator. Unfortunately, a lot of those are not in the top cut, but Transaction rollback definitely in the top cut. We also have Infernoble doing quite well today as two of them are in the top eight. Starting off with Infernoble for our first match. Let's get ready by watching as much as you can. That greatly supports me, liking, commenting, subscribing, all that good stuff. Also, I do want to say that for next week, we're going to ban Max C just for one tournament, just to see, uh, does it actually make the game better? Are there going to be degenerate decks that come out of nowhere, like maybe Spiral is just going to win the whole tournament? Uh, maybe, that'd be weird, right? That'd be crazy. I would be for it. And with that said, let's begin. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at it. Let's go. Starting off with Infernoble. <laughs> We scoop in because we know that we don't have a way to disrupt them from going into a Charles the Great. And according to the official in-game highest rank rankings, this is not from the website decklist or our own gameplay. This is from Konami themselves, that if they summon Charles the Great, they're going to have an 86.5% win rate. And the opponent believed that they were going to actually have a 100% win rate with no way to stop it. Let's just take this into game number two. Discard the birth for our very first summon, Diablo Star. Activate to set up our original Sinful Spoils mate. Send the Diablo Star for summon number two. Summon number two is going to be leading into summon number three as we add that Poplar to trigger the effect to come forth and summon. Activate to grab the Divine Temple. Divine Temple setting up a monster into the back row. We're gonna use Ash, send the Oak to go into summon number four. With summon number four, we're gonna go into summon number five, triggering the effect of the Flame Burge and the Poplar, putting the Flame Burge into the back row. This is the standard play against Nibiru. So write this down and, and just look at this. So the, the Oak's gonna activate here first, and then after this, pause. This is what you should be ending on if you open up with a single Ash or a single Diablo Star, because if they have Nibiru, they can't really Nibiru here effectively. They Nibiru the field that triggers the field spell to summon the Flamebirds, which then puts the Mascarina into the back row. It's not going to be uh, that good for us to be doing that. And the field will light up for you. Uh, you'll see it as the Snake Eyes player. You're going to see their field light up, showing you that they do have Nibiru, where otherwise their field was not lighting up. We showed a clear gameplay example of that, I think maybe in the other video, or you'd have to watch it on Twitch. So let's get to it. And we are Nibiruing. And if they chose not Nibiru, we could have went into Apollo USA, we could have went into Promethean, summoned the Flame Burge, Flame Burge put the Mask Arena into the back row, and we're good. We're still great. We're fine. This is what one Ash or one Diablo Star will do. Now, if you have Diablo Star plus Ash, you'll make a different play. You'll be making plays the Field Spell and the original Sinful to go into a Borlode Savage Dragon instead. Come forth and summon the Mascarina. We're chaining Max C to the Flame Burst effect of summoning the Mascarina. Cross out designate will negate. We are negating that Max C. Ash and Imperm are still in play, plus the Mascarina disruption. Let's get ready for that. Straight to battle, not activating Mascarina. So. Decayed Stepson was totally okay with that because it ate up the battle phase. Now, Connector is going to be negated by Ash. Why would you Ash Connector and not save it for Isold? Well, if we're summoning a Dolphin, Dolphin's going to steal the Ash out of the hand. We pretty much have to use it. They really want to just get two Warriors on the field to make Isold. Noble Arm Museum can search for a Noble Arms. We're going to use Call by the Grave early onto the Ash. So that will make it so the Flame Burge can only reborn the Oak and Poplar. The Oak could still reborn the Ash, but the Ash will be negated. Searching for a Durendal. Durendal equip onto Connector. Activate searching for the Fire Flint Lady. Now we have the I Sold play. Let's go. Come forth. Linking this up into Hida. Hida, reborn a Fire Monster from the opponent's graveyard, which will be the Oak. Oak, trigger, reborn the Fire Flint Lady. Okay, pretty cool way to go into the I sold here. I sold, activate, grabbing the connector, saving the imperm for the second effect. Send four equip cards from the deck to finally use impermanence on the hard 
once per turn effect of summoning a monster from the deck. Very well done. Now as we further link this up into a Promethean Princess, Promethean will then reborn a fire monster from our grave. Our Hida is back as we now make a Ferocious Flame Swordsman. Original Sinful sending from the deck to go into the Renad. Renad on summon, recycle the Living Fossil, which will reborn a monster from the grave. That monster we, we re reborn will be the Fireflint Lady to then go into an Apollo USA. The Apollo USA, we are still smaller than the Flame Burge. That is not okay. If we had a Goddess, Goddess on the Flame Burge could then negate the Flame Burge from reborning from the grave, but we don't play Goddess. So what is this? It's just not good. We have the original Sinful, you know, again, the deck is supposed to summon Charles. If they don't summon Charles, they're probably not gonna win. Goodbye to the Apollo. It at least ate up the battle phase. Goodbye to the Ferocious, which has an activate effect when destroyed. It could reborn the Renan from the grave, which will then add back Durendal for another turn. Okay. We do have Ash to, ne to negate Durendal or the Connector. Hida is here, triggering the Flame Burge, triggering the Promethean Princess to take out the Hida. Let's speed this up. Come forth, Promethean Princess, triggering, fully resolving the Flame Burge, summoning the Oak and the Poplar. The Ash is still negated. We fingered Ash. We have Subversion to push the Promethean into the back row, though. Push into the back row you go, which a Flame Burge could now steal. We now have Link Kiribo. Does Tastina counter Snake Eyes? I don't think Tastina counters anything. We have Flame Bears in the back row, normal summoning our Ash, making our own Promethean Princess. Promethean reborn from the graveyard, our negated Ash, further Link climbing up into Amblo Whale. Oak sending itself plus the Flame Bears to summon from the deck, another Flame Bears. Flame Bears equipping our Mascarina, and now I think we're screwed. We're gonna have to deal with Mascarina and Ash. We're gonna use the Wanted in the draw phase. Ash onto the Wanted now. Our Durendal and Connector will not be negated. We still have a Dolphin in the deck to summon. Yep, we have a second copy of I Sold to also summon. We're also gonna draw a card with the Wanted. Let's do it. Connector activate. In response to that, we're gonna be summoning our IP Mascarina. Has DK Stepson used Apollo USA yet? I do not think so. No, we have not. So from the deck, we have the Dolphin, but the Promethean Princess is going to be triggered here. Popping the Amble Whale, then chaining our Mascarina before the Promethean locks us into Fire Monsters only. That is enough to have a scoop it up just to take this into game number three. Wanted, grabbing our Diablo Star. Maxi uh, to keep us in check? I don't think so. We're going for that 86.5% win rate by summoning our Charles the Great. This is it. Equip the rolling onto Charles to then summon another Charles the Great. Double spell and trap card negates. And then we're going to, while being equipped with it, we're gonna be able to use the Angelica ring to equip onto it. And you have to make sure you equip it onto this one. You can't equip Angelica onto this. It's a hard once per turn effect. Make sure you use the correct one. We did use the correct one. We have Angelica ring. So what do we have here? Negate a spell, negate a spell or trap, negate a spell or trap, negate anything, Promethean pop a special summon, and then Roland pop a card on the field non-targeting. Six disruptions. This is the standard six disruptions besides Baron will usually be a gear freed instead. Let's go. Three cards in the hand versus six disruptions. It ain't happening. Chaining Maxi. Okay, uh, let, let's go. Let him cook, sure. That's just going to, on resolution, negate. It even negates the super polymerization. Normal summon Valor. Okay, where are we going with this? Do we at least have wanted draw a card? We do not. Okay, 
suiciding in our Link Karibo. Mm -hmm. Even if we had evenly, we would negate evenly again, negate a third evenly, negate with Baron to floor also. And just like that, <laughs> lethal damage. Infernoble's the best turn one deck right now. Damn. And quite a turn one that was. Hajime. Discarding the Rise Hard for our Diablo Star, activating on Summon to set up from our deck our original Sinful, sending the Diablo Star to special from the deck in Ash. So we could go into Mascarina, which will go into Apollo USA, which will have about triple monster negate, plus the Promethean Pop, so it's about four disruptions. We could actually turn it into five with a Quadra negate Apollo USA. Let's do it. Now, we are going to be using the Called by the Grave onto the Promethean Princess. If we were to use the Keldo instead to spin it back, does she still destroy? By reading this, it says, destroy them if you do special summon. So even if she leaves the grave and she's no longer special summonable after activating, she will still destroy them and she will not special summon. So the Keldo is not actual disruption in response to her activation. You could use it early though. And just like that, Promethean Princess has been negated and fingered as we could then follow up summon our Mascarina. But when? We have about four disruption, which is going to be all on the Apollo USA. Make an Ancient Fairy Dragon here. Ancient Fairy Dragon in response to that, we're going to be summoning our Mascarina. Mascarina, these are the four disruptions we have. If we go into... No! We're foregoing the four disruptions to go into one disruption, which will be Nightmare Unicorn. Nightmare Unicorn on summon, discard a card, spin a card in the field back into the deck. Now, that is our one public disruption hidden. In the back row, we have impermanence. Keldo, in response to the Flame Burge attempting to summon monsters from the grave, we're going to spin them back in the deck. Also, spinning back the original Sinful Spoils so you don't have that follow up play of searching. We're then going to send a Sharon and I guess realize we have nothing to fuse with the Sharon. Yeah. Foolish Burial Sharon, no activate, Keck wait, and then we scoop. Okay, let's hop into game number two. Ended Fusion, we're going to be playing against Imperm and Valor. We got Fenrir grabbing from our deck a Kashtira tier limit as we then Branded Fuse send Albaz and Havnis to make a Lubellion. This will be triggering the Havnis as we also trigger our Lubellion, discarding the tier limit Kashtira. Now, Imperm negates onto the Lubellion mate. Synchron Revolution and the Destrutto can't be used. We can't Synchro with them. We could do something else with them if it's not Synchroing. Because we activated Brain Fusion, we're locked into Fusion only. Kit Cal on Summon. We think that the Imperm was taken up by the Lubellion, but they have a Valor on top of that. So the Kit Kalos was not safe. It's getting double negated here. It's negating the ability of being able to send itself to the graveyard to mill five. Also searching our deck for a Terrellman card. We're ending on a Sullyic, which is a pretty good disruptive here. It's going to... Uh, is this going to push the Kikaos in the back or that's going to screw things up? The Sullyic requires Kikaos to be on the field in order to negate a monster. And then the Kikaos would mill five, which would maybe mill into a fusion trigger, which would go into more disruption. Whoa, we're pushing the Cash Tier of Fenrir instead. The Sullyic is private knowledge, right? We don't know that they have Sullyic. We know they don't know. So I guess pushing the Fenrir back was the only real perceived disruption on the field. It ended up actually being a Sullyic, which they didn't know. We're gonna be sending Kick Kalos, permanently negating, trigger Kick Cal, mill five, negate with the Ash. No mill five for you. Okay, so no fusion trigger play that we have to worry about. And I don't think there's anything uh, in the other graveyard that we have to worry about. There is nothing there going off into our Link Karibo, ending our turn. Snake Eyes, uh, wait, this is Cash, uh, huh? This is Vanquish Soul, Snake Eyes. Okay, and then they still have room for cards like Subversion. Huh? Okay, sure. Double Revolution Synchro. We have a bunch of tuners, but no good non-tuners to use our cards with. Sea Mare off the top of the deck, which is just like a Rhino Heart. We're going to be sending from the deck Havnis, Havnis, activate to fuse with itself. If it can't fuse with itself, the fusion does not work. By banishing the Havnis, no fusion summon. 
Very nice. We're then going to be summoning our Destrutto with 5,900 damage on the field here. Lethal damage. Uh, some basic back and forth plays. Nothing really big happened. Kit Cal, Sullyak, Hidden Sullyak. We had Fenrir for disruption. Okay. Starting off with our special summoned unicorn, grabbing our Theosis, which will lock us into Xyz monsters only. Wait, that is not Theosis. They kind of look the same. We grab Theosis, then activated Stake Your Soul to summon a Raisin. Every card sent to the grave will be banished. And we have Masquerina Link off. And we have Promethean Princess to pop a card in Special Summon. But the counter to a Rise Heart is Triple Tactics Talent. We could simply activate Reinforce on the army, which will trigger the mandatory effect of a Rise Heart to equip a banished card. And then TTT could take control of the Arise. How are we going to respond to the Triple Tactics Talent? Are we going to go nuts? Are we going to try to link off of the Rise into something else that they'll take control of? This will be interesting. Our effect veiler is dead as long as we have a rise. The cost is to send to the graveyard. We can't send to the grave. So let's see what happens. We have unicorn. Holy moly. There we go. As I said, reinforce the army, trigger the arise heart, and then triple tactics talent. Activate. Take control. Chain mascarina. On resolution, we're taking something. Goodbye to arise in the mascarina. Going into Nightmare Unicorn. What do we even want here? It's all garbage. TTT, come to me, your unicorn. Well, my unicorn is activatable, spinning the opposing unicorn you took back in the deck. It was also co-linked, so we drew a card here. Supreme Mayor on summon will trigger the Flame Burst to summon from the back row, but this is not disruption. We just have Valor and Promethean Princess. Promethean Princess and Valor are our two main disruptors. Kit Cal on summon, activate, getting super negated. It's not going to be able to send itself to the grave to then summon a tier limit to then mill five. Completely screwed up there. Now to play around that, you would generally have the field spell first, then field spell could pop her in response to her own activation to play around a Valor or an Impermanence. But in this case, we could have used the field spell to also pop a card on the field. Grabbing a tier link, Cash Tira. Drone Lockbird, stopping you from further adding cards in the deck to the hand. Sending a Hovness to then mill three to trigger the Hovness and then fuse into a Rukalos with the effect to negate a special summon. Now the Promethean Princess will be negated. To battle we go. We could negate the Flame Burge, which uh, we didn't even activate. Okay. We are going into the Tier Limit Cash Tira, banishing the Grief, going into Verte Anaconda. Huh? <laughs> we are scooping this up. Damn. Vodka the Cook has definitely cooked. Branded Tier Limit. Verte Anaconda into the Branded Fusion play. I love it. Branded Fusion ensures that you can't summon any non-fusions the turn you activate the card, but the Anaconda plays around it. And then the Anaconda is not just one disruption, it's double. Non-target monster banished plus the ability to reborn the Albaz to then fuse the opponent's field. It's nuts. Small World it up. Ash is going to negate. Gamma negate the negate mate. Negate! And we get a free level 8 Synchro, which could be a Baron to Floor if we make an Excel start of Synchro to reborn the Gamma from the Grave. Do we have the room for it, though? Yeah, uh, no, we have uh, Omega. Omega can banish a card from the hand, which could be the Impermanence. You could randomly take that Imperm out, or uh, no, you will not randomly banish one of my other cards that's not Impermanence. Negate. Well... Omega needs to be off the field to summon the Unicorn. And the Unicorn was searched for by the Small World, right? Yeah. So they got screwed. <laughs> Damn. Stuck on the field. Can't make our full Wombo Combo play with Unicorn into a Rise Heart. 
the entire combo got screwed. That was huge. Oh, there's the transaction rollback. Omega returning a banish card back into the grave, activating to randomly banish the Dogmatica Knighted. End of the battle phase, banishing just a single impermanence. We now have Dogmatica Ecclesia getting impermed, meaning the transaction rollback can now copy the impermanence from the opponent's graveyard. Very nice. And then, but not within the same turn, we could then copy our own impermanence or evenly matched. Omega needs to leave the field. Does this not banish if it doesn't banish a card from the hand? Because if that's the case, we're again screwed. Banish both this and uh, one random card. Yeah, it doesn't banish. Oh my gosh. So Unicorn is stuck in the freaking hand. We can't get it out on the field. Our Omega keeps getting stuck on the field. Okay, we could normal summon it into what? Donner, Donner pop itself. We could negate, negate Donner. Keep the Donner stuck on the field. But then Donner could swing in by battle and then they could summon Unicorn in main phase too. So it is even worth it. Yeah, yeah, probably not worth it, right? Just hold the transaction rollback for the Unicorn. Negate at the cost of 4,000 life points. Oh my gosh. Now, with the transaction rollback in our grave, we could copy impermanence or evenly matched. Evenly matched must be used at the end of the battle phase, which uh, we could do. We have Ariana on summon grabbing a big welcome labyrinth. Unicorn's gonna banish a card from the extra deck. Goodbye to the end, Tiss. Big welcome could summon a lovely return back Ariana, popping the unicorn on the field. We have Forbidden Lance, which could protect us from spell and trap cards, but the effect of lovely is not a spell nor trap. Ooh, we are popping the hand and not the field because we could, uh, huh? We could copy Impermanent Gate. Sure, there you go. I, I guess that uh, is safer. Pop the hand and then also imperm the unicorn. Now, if your opponent's asking you, are you popping my hand or field? They don't tell you until resolution. So it wasn't a situation where you choose the hand and they chain the lance and then uh, we got gotcha. you. You choose on resolution. Let's go, let's go. Lovely Labyrinth is gonna recycle a trap from the graveyard back on the field. Summon Ariana, search for a Labyrinth card. Thus, Unicorn is not enough. We are scooping it up. Let's get to it. Dimension Shifter, ensuring that any card sent to the grave will be banished instead. The Ash Blossom does not have to go to the grave by cost, so it's perfectly fine and activatable. Negating the field spell from searching for a Kashtira. We have Birth, which we can normal summon a Kashtira from the hand. Unicorn banishing from the extra deck. Goodbye, Baguska, as we summon a Rise Heart from the deck with Theosis, banishing a Fenrir. Now we're going to negate the Rise Heart from becoming level seven. Now the birth is still going to summon that Fenrir onto the field. And did Unicorn search for the birth? Did it search for birth? It did, so we knew that this was gonna happen. Like this is, Public knowledge, there, there's no surprise. It's no, oh my gosh, I can't believe he had birth. He searched it. The Rise Heart banishes the Fenrir by cost and all he did was stop it from being level seven. Now with any card being sent to the grave is being banished, we also have banish any card in the field as our disruption, plus our imperm, plus our preparations to summon a banished Fenrir. So if we can get the Fenrir banished through the Rise Heart detaching it, that'll be a way to get it back on the field. Negate the Ariana searching. Still waiting with the Arise Heart. When we should banish. We're equipping a banished card. We're not activating the banish. Dogmatica come forth and summon. It does not negate unless we have an Ecclesia. We're gonna link this up into Dark Dark Steel the Dimension Shifter. We are going to, in response to its activation, banish the dark off the field. Be gone. Now that we detached and banished our Fenrir, we could reborn it back in the field with our preparations. We're gonna use Theosis after being banished to trigger to grab the banished unicorn to be used next turn. So this one disruption is the banished Fenrir that could be resummoned. And uh, there's nothing to even resummon it into. 
just like that let's go we have our triple material again arise heart will get destroyed the arise heart is going to be triggering we are also activating the preparation we are scooping this up we out of here we are out opening up with the ariana into an impermanence negate i would say you never use ash blossom on ariana but impermanence is good this is fine now the ariana being negated was the way to get the rollback in the grave now even though we can't get rollback in the grave through a furniture card we could use rollback to now copy the opposing impermanence special summoning our fenrir into a big welcome labyrinth ash will negate this is where if we had the furniture card to discard the rollback we could copy the effect a big welcome to summon anyway Activating to grab the unicorn. We're not going to use rollback to imperm it. I mean, all we have is this rollback imperm at the cost of half of our life points. Dark arm's going to start popping cards in the fields. Detach. Oh, we let it. We let it. Sure. That's fine. Now I could copy the effect of Big Welcome. I could copy the effect of Evenly Matched at the end of the battle phase. When do we use it? Unicorn, uh, should we have uh, someone lovely return Ariana get popping? I, I, I think so. I feel like that was the moment. Now it's not. Uh, there is a ghost mourner, but how are we supposed to know about it? We waited for the birth. Okay, sure. Uh, birth is limited to one, but there still could have been another birth in the hand. Lovely. Return Ariana. Activate. Pop the birth. Ghost mourner. Negate. Ain't no way you have Ghost Mourner to negate. Affect Valor on your own damn turn. What? Birth summoning the Fenrir, and you're the one playing rollback, which reduces your life points by half. Lethal damage. Damn. The downside of rollback having your life points being the reason we lost. Hmm. Hajime. Yoinking Diablo Star. <laughs> Everyone's playing Diablo Star, right? Let's go. That's the downside of the card. You have to just call a card. You have to. You either think you're getting lucky, but I mean, Diablo Star is in almost every single deck, right? And then the opponent has to choose to plop it on your field or put it in your hand. Original Sinful set up. <laughs> He's sending. Your Diablo Star to your graveyard. We're on summon number two, summon number three. Come forth, come to us, Divine Temple. Is Lullaby yourself summoning it or your opponent, right? Aren't you making your opponent summon? So shouldn't it not count towards Nibiru and have to read the card? We have Snake Eyes, Flame Burge. Yeah, when everyone played Fenrir, you would call Fenrir. That was also a good idea. Flame Burge triggered. Get Reborning Poplar, target the Flame Burge to equip the Flame Burge into the back row. Now, if you Nibiru, it's not going to be so good because that will trigger the Field Spell, summoning the Flame Burge. Oak, Reborn the Ash. This is where you'll see their Field Light up, and we're just going to further cook into Promethean Princess. We don't have to go into a Poly USA because it's still ideal for us if you Nibiru. It's still pretty good. Get Reborning, another Flame Burge. Holding on to that Nibiru now! We're going to Nibiru, and now there's an extra Promethean Princess in the grave that should not be there. Come forth, Flame Burge. Flame Burge, equip the Mascarina from our grave into the back row. It's like, you can't wait. You, you just have to Nibiru. You have to. Wanted Seeker of Sinful Spoils, adding back our engraved Diablo Star that the opponent stole from us. Max seeing on the resolution before it is inherently special summoned. We have Heritage of the Chalice, grabbing our Ogier. Ogier send from the deck a Turpin. If we have an equip card, the Turpin will be, be summonable. We're going to chain Maxi to the Snake Eyes, summoning the Mascarina as we have Ash Negate. Okay. Very good. No continual drawing for you off of the Mascarina Summon. Mascarina Link, Flame Burst Summon. Then Oak Summon or Poplar potentially Summon. Could have probably drawn up to four to five cards here. As we now go into Nightmare Unicorn on Summon, discard the Effect Veiler, spinning the O-Gear back into the deck. 
We want to stop them from equipping. We do not want them to get that Turpin out. We don't want them to make the ice sold. We have the Ash and Oak activating. We are reborning the Poplar, potentially adding a Poplar to then summon another Poplar. Instead, we're gonna grab Curry Card to be used next turn. Did we just droll ourselves? Hopefully we're not going to be further searching. Okay. You're, it's your turn and you drolled. We have Ferocious Flame Swordsman. Uh, wait, we're under Maxi also? Why is Maxi just popping off? Who 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 Maxied? We Maxied in this turn? We we also Maxied? Okay, we drolled the Maxi. Did we? Yeah, the, the two Maxis. They both Maxied. Okay. But their maxi got ashed. We maxied, they maxied, we ashed their maxied, our maxi is maxiing. But now it's uh, getting drolled. We're gonna use Riccardetto and the Flame Swordsman to go into Hida. Triggering the Promethean Princess that should not be in that grave to come forth and summon, taking out Hida. Hida can't search, it is negated by Droll. And just like that, if you hate maxi, we'll be banning it for next week's tournament. Noble Arms Museum, we gotta play against a Bell and Impermanence. Can we do it? No Imperm on Connector. We're gonna save the Imperm on the Isolde instead because the Dolphin can't rip out the Impermanence. We just looked at the hand. We know there's an Impermanence. So what do we do? It's there. We're gonna activate on Summon. Not gonna get Imperm, that would be a huge mistake. Now the Imperm happens. Imperm, negate. All right, how much can we further cook after being in permanence? We do have Original Sinful, which could summon a Ricardetta, which could reborn a level four non-tuner from the grave if we had one. And so we're gonna Durendal, grabbing a Renaud. Renaud could be special summon if we control a Fire Warrior, which we do not so far. We have the Ricardetta I was talking about. Renaud, add back the Living Fossil. And then with Living Fossil, we're gonna be reborning the Connector, our level four non-tuner, to go into the Angelica. We need, it. we need a way to target the Angelica to then chain its effect. We didn't have a way to target the Angelica. Inferred Noble versus Tier Lament in the top four. You love to see it. Yes. Begin. Now, how many disruptions? Spell and trap card negate, spell and trap card negate, spell negate. We then have the gear freed, which is a monster negate. We have in the grave, the Promethean Princess on summon, get poppin. And then the sixth disruption will be the Roland. Quick effect, equip onto a monster, triggering the Charles to pop a card in the field, non-targeting. Six disruptions through multiple spell and trap, monster and poppin, let's go. Those are the public disruptions, not counting the hand traps here. Foolish burial goods we're going to be negating. Now down to five disruptions. This is it. Of course, you can't play through this. Are you out of your damn mind? The Mog is being sent to the graveyard, triggering to return three cards in the grave back in the deck to draw one. It drew an ash on the previous turn. We are then going to negate again. Now down to four disruptions. We have a spell card negate, monster negate, Promethean Princess pop, and the Renaud pop. The uh, Roland, that is. Ash negate, which was not one of our four public disruptions. So we have an extra negate on the Sharon, attempting to summon and mill. Albaz is going to attempt to fuse the opposing field. Gearfried is going to negate. Now dropping us down to three disruptions left. Bullish Burial will be negated by the Angelic Ring. And then we have two more disruptions on top of that. Just like that. Very well done, Infernoble, one of the best turn one decks that exist. If you don't get max seed. Infernoble, not a good deck going second. We have Rhino Heart getting Ash Blossom negated. We could follow up Triple Tactics Talent, look at that hand or draw two. What will we choose to do? Bro, what? Did you, what? What, what? 
shifter right away. Boom. You're done. What can we do? Cannot use original sinful. Impossible to use. The poplar into field spell put a flame burst in the back row, I guess. That's something. Okay, sure. We could special summon a flame burst or a special summon an ash off of your summon, which could search for a poplar, then summon or search for a Kurikara. Rasher planet, we could still ash, we could still use ghost spell. Unicorn is here, trigger the field spell here. Come forth and summon the ash, ash into another ash for the next turn. Unicorn looking at that extra deck, banishing the Promethean Princess, be gone. Unicorn getting negated from searching for a Theosis or a Birth. Not happening today. Rise Heart Special Summon, banish from the deck, banish three cards off the top of your deck face down. As we then normal summon a Rise Heart in addition to this. We are then MP2ing it up into Shang-Ri. Okay, now the Rise Heart effect become, makes it level seven. So we could not make a Shang-Ri, then Rise Heart banish to then make an Arise Heart. That unfortunately was not possible. Now the Shang-Ri will be able to summon a Fenrir from the deck, which will be able to banish a face of card after they activate any uh, monster effect. Lullaby, <laughs> what are we? What are we lullabying against Kashtira? This is gonna give them a monster in their hand or summon it on the field. We can now use the original Sinful if we want to. Now, the field spell did get triggered because we activated the effect of Shang-Ri, then it allows us to pop anything on the field. Then we are banished if we want to. We're waiting. Pop our summon, did not activate. Grabbing a Link Rebo. So do we only play one original in one field spell? That's what I think. Equipping the Poplar, making the Mascarina. Further linking this up into a Nightmare Unicorn. Our Promethean Princess is banished face down, it's gone. Unicorn on summon, discard to get spin and spin that Fenrir back. Trigger the Flame Burst, reborn two level one fires from the grave. Original Sinful, send the Poplar, summon the Oak. Oak reborn from the graveyard or banish. Banish Poplar it is. Lullaby, Ash. Wait, you returned Fenrir back in the deck. You could have taken their Fenrir maybe, but then, you know, they would have to give Ash in your hand or summon it, sure. Snake Eyes Flame Burge Dragon is here as we make a World Sea Dragon Zelantis. Zelantis is gonna banish the entire field to then reborn it back onto the field. Shangri with no materials in attack position here. Zelantis is back. Come forth, Snake Eyes Flame Burge Dragon. We have 5,500 damage, boosting this up up to 7,200 damage, not enough. We have Hida. Hida, steal a fire monster from the opponent's graveyard. Come to me, Rise Heart. We're gonna push the Rise Heart into the back row with 8,850 damage on the field. It just like that. Lethal damage. All right. Was not able to summon the Rise Heart. The Ash stopped us from doing that. Yep, that uh, was the issue. We couldn't get a Rise Heart out, so we couldn't counter the Snake Eyes, and then we lost. What the heck is this? This is not good. We have no Kashtira plays. Okay. Wait, I mean, like, Doggy, you, you're, you're good, right? Well, you're not actually, uh, huh. Maybe you could steal a Fenrir from their deck, right? Activate, call Fenrir, they gotta summon it or give it to you in your hand. I mean, you could confidently do that, right? If they didn't summon Fenrir, they passed turn one. They have Fenrir in the deck. <laughs> yes. Fenrir to the hand. Come forth and summon. Lullaby of Obedience is here. Yes. Setting up with the temple into an Ash in the back row. We got Imperm, Ash, and Fenrir. Small World could get Ash, but we're not going to. That would play right into the Gamma. Okay, now special summoning our Unicorn, triggering the field spell to summon the Ash, Ash activate, grabbing an Ash for the follow-up turn. To battle we go, big enough to take out the Fenrir before we activate a monster effect. We do not want the Fenrir to be triggered. Imperm, negate the Unicorn. Lance, protect ourselves from the Impermanence. Unaffected from spell and traps. Protected. We got Birth. We're going to call by the grave the Fenrir before 
the Baron de Four will negate the finger. Now the birth could still summon the Fenrir in the field, but it will still be negated. Get Burthen. Was this the Imperm column? Okay, we didn't successfully negate. Imperm says negate, then if you negated something like that, then it will negate the column. Fenrir is negated, that's okay. Theosising, Ash, negate. We didn't go into the Baron de Floor to negate the Ash. Okay, it's fine. What else we have here? Unicorn being triggered, looking at that extra deck, ripping out the Unicorn as we now go into our Baron de Floor. Baron de Floor wiping out the Ash, open field 40, 55, oh wait, 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 oh, wait, wait. did we already like, a, a, we did the thing? We're in MP2. Huh? Okay, sure. MP2, MP2, MP2. We had to take out the Fenrir, that's why. We had to take it out. I'm gonna go BP2. Ash, negate with the Baron to floor. That's the scoop. We didn't need a Rise Heart to beat Snake Eyes? Okay. Well, we needed Snake Eyes to kind of brick. Uh oh, we have Maxi, Gamma, and Ash to play through. Completely ending our turn. Poplar is a one card combo play, but under Maxi, we're just gonna chill under Imperm, Veiler, and Ghost Bell. Now, the Saravis is a negate on the Impermanence or the Effect Veiler. Come to us, Unicorn, Special Summon, Activate, Veiler, Negate, Saravis. Negate the negate. Imperm, dodge the negate on the negate to then negate the unicorn. Now we have Fenrir stuck in our hand. We have no way to summon it. We could normal summon the ash to make a Baron to floor. Do we though? We do, we do. Baron to floor is here. Omni negate, ready to pop any card in the field during our own main phase one. How do we play around Baron to floor? Baron de Floor is the only disruption. Olivai, what can we take that will protect us from Gamma? I do, like, I, do we know what they do? They, they, they play Droplet? Would you play Droplet and Cash Tira? You can't activate Droplet if there's an Arise Heart. I mean, well, we can't just take a spell either. That's cheating. What can we even take? <laughs> the Fenrir! It's limited to one! It's in the hand, it's not in the deck! Ain't no way! Damn! We thought we had it! Oh my gosh! Close, close. I, like, I mean, the Fenrir was private knowledge, and it wasn't on the field grave or banished, so, like, it had to be in the deck, right? Oh my gosh. Baron de Flore negating the original sinful spoils. Negate, no summon of a level one from the, oh my gosh, we just ended our turn. Huh? We're at 2,900 life. Link Karibo destroyed. Battle phase, Baron to floor. Arise heart, nowhere to be seen. Damn, that is wild. <laughs> what the? All right, it's time for the grand finale. Are you ready for the grand finale? Pure Cash Tira built to beat Snake Eyes, made it all the way to the grand finale. Infernoble, while well, Infernoble is the best performing deck if they meet a certain condition, that condition being from the official in-game data off of the top cards page, page being win rate on summon, Emperor Charles being summoned. 86.5% win rate, and the second highest win rate being Emperor Charles itself. So. I guess uh, that is why the deck is doing so well, because it keeps on summoning Emperor Charles the Great. Now, with that said, Hajime. I thought we would have to ban Max C so that we could see something else that's not Snake Eyes in the grand finale, but I guess the meta corrected itself. We are chaining Max C to the pot of P, then we're gonna chain the Ash to negate the Max C. I do not think so. The fear is that the Pot of Pea is going to grab a Call by the Grave or an Ash, but we already had the Ash to negate, so very well done. Let's dig deep. Six cards off the top of the deck, giving us our Small World. Small World is going to build a bridge between the Psyframe Driver and the Sarvis and the Unicorn being the end result. 
Unicorn on summon is in an open game state to then activate to grab the Theosis. Theosis onto the Unicorn, summoning the Fenrir. Fenrir searching for the Rise Heart. Now the fear here is Nibiru. If you want to play around Nibiru, you do what we're doing. That's it. On the fourth summon, you make the Arise Heart. So we now cannot get Nibiru'd. We have the quick effect to banish any card in the field face down, and any card sent to the grave is banished instead. That's a huge deal. So Renaud's gonna be quite useless because Renaud returns a card in the graveyard back to the hand. The Phoenix Gear Freed, in order to summon it, you could banish from your graveyard or your field. So we could equip onto the field, then summon the Phoenix Gear Freed. Now the Ogier sends a card from the deck to the grave. The Wanted searches for Diablo Star, which in order to summon her, you have to send a card to the grave, which you can't do. So a lot of this hand is screwed up by that Arise Heart existing. Ogier is gonna be banishing our Turpin, triggering the Arise Heart to equip the Theosis, summoning our Renaud, adding the Banish card. Okay, Renaud does Banish or Grave. I did, I, I knew that. Renaud equipping onto the Arise Heart. Now, Angelica cannot be targeted by the Arise Heart because if you do so, you'll chain her effect, which her main effect is to be targeted. You'll see if we do it. You're not doing it. You're not doing it. On summon, we're activating to search. This is just the trigger effect. It's not the quick effect. Grabbing the Noble Arm Museum. Okay. Now we have to find a way to target her and then she'll be activating. We're gonna grab the Joy Use from the deck. Joy Use, targeting the Angelica. We're gonna be chaining onto the Angelica. We could then chain to the Arise Heart. So this is the benefit of not fully understanding how the Noble Knight cards work. So let's read that effect real quick. When this card is targeted by a card effect while on, uh, on the field, it states that you could send one monster from your deck to the graveyard and if you do banish this card, so it's like, the Angelica's not even good. It, it, she doesn't even work because a Rise Heart just doesn't let her work. Send a fire from the deck to the grave if you do, which we can't banish this card, which we can't send from the deck to the grave so we don't banish this card. Then you could summon a Roland, which we can't because we didn't if you do, uh, yeah. So we're gonna do it anyway. We're gonna banish, which we didn't send it to the grave. So now it's banished face down. Even if the Arise, what Arise Heart should have done, it was just let it activate, not even banish it off the field because its effect got completely screwed up by the Arise Heart. And then we could have maybe banished something else like the Phoenix Gear Freed, which at the start of the damage step can take the Arise Heart and turn it into an equip card. Preparations is going to be summoning a Fenrir. Now, does Fenrir activate? It states, accept the damage step after your opponent activates a monster effect. You see this one? That is the start of the damage step. So we are within the damage step, sucking up the Arise Heart while attacking the Fenrir and we did not preparations at the start of the battle phase. So had we used this at the start of the battle phase, we could have triggered the Fenrir on the attack declaration. Instead, after the attack declaration happened, which is when we summoned the Fenrir, so we got really screwed. A, a lot of infamiliarity with how the Infernoble cards work here are helping out Arca a lot, I think so. The Diablo Star can now activate, sending the Turp into the grave, come forth and summon, equip into the back row, let's go. We got the original Sinful Spoil, send a card we control to the graveyard, which was not possible with the Rise Heart on the field. Ricardetto is going to be, so, uh, I mean, let's talk about this. We preparation summon Fenrir early, then the Phoenix Gear Freed uh, would have, uh, so the Fenrir says only when this card declares an attack. I mean, we were still screwed anyway, right? So, uh, summoning at the start of the battle phase did not matter. This was gonna activate the start of the damage step. So uh, to go back, I think I was saying it was a misplay. It, there was just nothing we could do. Cause the Fenrir only triggers on its own attack, not on the gear freed attack. So uh, yeah, uh, me saying that uh, summoning on the attack declaration after did not matter because it's only off the opponent's monster effect. So now that we got that cleared up, let's keep on cooking. As we go into Emperor Charles the Great, just like that, the high win rate has been activated. 86.5% on summon. The Angelica Ring is equipped onto the Gear Freed. We have a Monster Negate, Spell and Trap card Negate, another Spell Negate. If you activate Lance, it's gonna be negated on resolution. We have Roland, which could quick effect, equip, and then trigger the effect to pop any card on the field. Let's go. 
So this is just to trigger the angelic ring. Okay. <laughs> Come forth and summon unicorn. Gear freed. Send to negate. Negate and destroy. Holy moly. And then we have the Kashtira, which we're going to chain roll and equip, which will trigger the Charles the Great to trigger to pop the Kashtira off the field. And that's it. Nothing in the hand, nothing in the field, absolutely nothing. Emperor Charles re-equipping the Angelic Ring during the end phase. And let's finish this off with two giant monsters, 4,000 attack plus per game. So the only real issue there was acting, activating the Arise Heart onto the Angelica. The Angelica was already not going to be doing much. The Angelica would have just stayed on the field. So maybe there would have been a point where we would have want to use the Arise Heart on it anyway, maybe. But I, I think we would wait for the Emperor Charles to be summoned. And then before the Emperor Charles gets equipped with something to trigger to pop a card in the field, I think we would then banish it, right? That is what we would do. But then the Gear Freed was also an issue. That could have been something. Can Gear Freed negate with a Rise Heart in the field? I think it needs to send to the graveyard, right? It states, send an equip card to the graveyard by cost. Thus, it's not even activatable with a Rise Heart in the field. So, uh, yeah. We had to save a Rise Heart to banish the Gear Freed, and the Gear Freed could not negate the Arise Heart. So that was the mistake, not when we summon Fenrir. Unicorn searching our deck for the Theosis, holding on to the Impermanence. You could hold on to Imperm just for the Arise Heart if you want to. Then Rear searching for the Rise Heart, and by holding it for the Arise, you'd be using the Imperm on just your own turn. Banish three off the top of the deck, turning into a level seven again, playing around Nibiru. Now, we have Lance for your impermanence trying to negate us. So we're going to try to negate that Arise Heart so that our cards don't get banished when sent to the grave. And we're going to be fully protected, only reducing our attack. And you're still under that disruption. You cannot use Original Sinful. The Wanted searches for a Diablo Star that cannot be summoned. What the heck are we going to do? And we got to play through double impermanence. Connector, activate summon. We did an imperm, noble museum, grabbing the Durendal, which could search our deck for a fire warrior. Come to us, fire flint lady, which could be a special summon if we control a warrior. We're just triggering. We're not activating the banish yet. Come forth, summon, summon, summon. Renaud, grab back the banished Durendal to our hand. Dolphin's going to discard to look at the hand, then take 500 because it was not small enough. Six material arise heart. We get in big. Now we have Angelica. Angelica is here on summon searching for another museum. Uh, again, this is, uh, well, okay, so here's the thing. She's stuck on the field because of arise heart. If it weren't for arise heart, you would chain to the impermanence and you would dodge the impermanence. So normally, this is bad. You do not imperm, but because of a rise heart keeping her on the field, she will get negated. She'll be stuck on the field. She's stuck. Help me step row. Banish, stuck on the fields, negated by imperm, boom. Okay, we're good. More attaching, keep on attaching. We're not even ready to fire off our banish yet. We're going into Isold. Isold on summon will search. Now, can Isold even activate its main effect with a Rise Heart in the field? I don't think so. The cost, it, it can't, it can't. You have to send the equip cards by cost. Isold doesn't work. Angelica doesn't work. The whole deck does not work against a Rise Heart. The Gear Freed was so lucky. That what was the only play. Damage step, suck up the Arise Heart was the only way. The Gear Freed's back, but this time we know to not use our effect early. Because we didn't banish the Angelica early, you didn't have a play where you could have equipped, banish the equip, summon, attack, and then suck up at the start of the damage step. We know to save the banish for the Gear Freed. End phase, banish the Angelica off of the field. We're gonna be able to banish again during the next turn. Holy moly, we could banish every single turn. The power of a Rise Heart is too much. It took one game to just learn the interaction with Angelica to, I don't know, maybe guarantee the entire match victory. The problem is if we win game two, Infernoble's going first for game three. 
Can we handle a go first in for Noble for game three? Come forth, Rise Heart. Rise Heart banishing the birth to then banish three cards off of the top of the deck. We're going to suck up a card. We do not have enough damage for lethal yet. Goodbye to the I Sold. We need 6,300 damage. Now that Theos is being detached by the Arise Heart, being banished, triggering the effect to grab back a banished birth, which was banished by the Rise Heart, will now be able to summon a banished or engraved Kash Tira, which should be enough for lethal damage. 24, 28, 3K, 1500, and just like that, the power of a Rise Heart ensuring that every card since the grave gets banished wins game number two. I sold Angelica, they're all screwed. Get Max Seed. Wanted Seeker grabbing the Diablo Star. This is the moment where we can Max Seed early, unless we want to play around a Gamma. We maybe don't want to get Gamma, so we hold on to our Max Seed. Diablo Star grabbing the original Sinful. Now, you may want to max C early, but if you wait for the activation of the original, uh, if you're playing around Gamma, you still can't activate the max C. Heritage of the Chalice grabbing the O Gear. O Gear on Summon. Send from the decks of the Grave the Gear Freed. Fire Flint Lady activate. Now we can max C. And we're not changing the ban list to OCG or TCG. It's simply, it would just be Maxi Band. And what the heck did we end on? Because of Maxi, we ended on zero disruption, zero nothing, nada. This is trash. We have our own Maxi, though. Maybe that could help, potentially. Maxi early, even though we are playing against a deck that plays Gamma. <laughs> Luckily, that was a driver and not a Gamma. Pot of P reducing our damage by half. Halved damage for the rest of the turn. Hey, there's the gamma I could have had, mates. We're going to be summoning our ogre. Ogre activate, searching for the preparations. We're still special summoning. Are you out of your mind? Summoning a Fenrir from the deck. Activate Fenrir, search our deck for the Scareclaw Kashtira. What are you doing? You're under max C. 4,300 damage on the field to battle we go. We are not special summoning that Scareclaw Kashtira. We are going to ogre. Look at the top five cards of the deck, and you do not shuffle. You get to know exactly what they're going to draw. By banishing the Triple Tactics talent, you 100% know they are going to draw into a dead, a trash droll in Lockbird. Goodbye to the O gear. MP number two, just like that, into a Rise Heart. Well, uh, you know, under Maxi. Well, we know that not only that they were drawing into the droll, we know 100% they're drawing in a Durendal. So Durendal is their next draw. There we go, Durendal. Durendal get equipin, activate to grab our Renaud. Renaud could grab a banished equip or monster back to our hand. Can we break this field? Our normal summon being used on Dolphin to look at that hand. There's no hand trap in sight to worry about as the Scareclaw Cash Tira come forth and get summoned. We're gonna have to play through Imperm Negate, Imperm Negate, Arise Heart, banish any card in the field. We can't use our original Sinful Spoils. It's an illegal activation. We're in huge trouble. The Ricardetto summons a monster from the grave, which all our cards are getting banished. So what is good? Now, Renaud could recycle the Gear Freed in the grave back to our hand. That is something. Grabbing back the Birth. That is fine. That's not really doing anything to this turn at the moment. Ricardetto is going to banish itself to summon the Renaud. Renaud activating, add the Gear Freed. Now, if we have an equipped card in the graveyard, we could banish it to then summon the Gear Freed, but the Renaud is getting negated by Impermanence. Negate. Damn. And we can't follow up with Original Sinful. It's not possible. Illegal activation. We're detaching, banishing the Renaud off the field. Get that level one tuner out of here. So we have a link. Link into what? Oh my gosh. Preparations, activating, summoning that Fenrir back onto the field from being banished. Everything in attack position as the Scareclaw Cash Tier can attack while on defense. We have preparation, summoning another body onto the field. We have 13,000 damage on the field. Just like that, get equipping, equipping a Link Spider on attack, banishing the Diablo Star, equip off of the banish. Keep on going. Is this it? Yes, it is. Pure Kashtira 
built to be played and countering Snake Eyes has won the entire meta weekly just like that. Congratulations, Noxumbra. Let's do it. New pack day. What did it look like? Snake Eyes still dominating the tournament, but we had some nice surprises. Labyrinth with the new transaction rollback. Unfortunately, no Resonator, no Testina, and no Earthbound in sight. Now, there were some of them within the tournament. A lot of them got knocked out round one. We do have a gameplay video for that, so you can check that out. And let's start off with the deck list. Let's start from the bottom. Boom. You have Mobile Axe, 40 card clean. This is nothing too crazy. Looking quite standard. Good job to you, Snake Eyes. And then we have Trigger with transaction rollback at two. I was looking at the analytics for TCG and OCG decklist as being played at two or three, so that's fine. And we also have less Torby, less Chandelier. That is a problem that makes it a bit less consistent. So there's the extra deck, there is the main deck. And then we have Escanor with Dinosaur. Looking good, triple super poly, Dinosaur. All right, there's the extra, there's the main. We then have LMT. Rikasuna Valin. I'm thinking they're going to enjoy the Band Maxi tournament. We're going to have one next week. It's just going to be a one of them. We're going to go back to normal. We just want to, you know, maybe every once in a while, Band Maxi to see what the meta would look like. And then we have Chris with Vanquish Soul. All right. There's a Vanquish Soul Snake Eyes deck around here somewhere, I think. I got to look out for it. Good job, Chris. And then Maraud. This. Wait, what? what this is like Mech Knight Snake Eyes? Huh? With a uh, on your mark set duel? I, I'm interested. Okay. You know, I've, I talked about if you're bored of Snake Eyes, mix it with some other decks. And uh, there you go. Mech Knight is one of those other decks you can mix it with. I've been playing it with TG for fun. Aaron, pure Snake Eyes. It's good. It's great. Let's keep on going. We have check one with Branded Despia. The deck is slowly dropping down from 60 cards. It, you know, the opening did recently get limited to one here. Okay, there is the main deck. There is the extra deck. And then we have Kamzee. Kamzee with more Labyrinth. Triple rollback. It definitely makes the deck better if you're playing the furniture cards. So that is what you'd want to play with it. Very nice. There you go. And it's not about just having one of the furniture cards in your opening hand. So it'd be furniture, 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 furniture. You only have four. It's also Ariana. Ariana could get you to the furniture card or even a welcome or big welcome summoning Ariana to then search for a furniture to then discard the transaction rollback. So if you feel like you're wasting your welcome labyrinth on an Ariana, you could then use the rollback to copy it again. Okay, I, I'm excited to play some labyrinth. And then we have a flying dino with Infernoble. There's the main deck, 45 cards. It's very difficult to play the deck down to 40 cards. There is the extra deck, looking nice. Let's keep on going. And then we have Kid Arts with Cash Tira Snake Eye. No Theosis, that would lock you into Exceed only. We don't even have a Rise Heart in the extra deck. This is good, let's keep on going. Now, this is the wild deck. Aben PS, 60 card Snake Eye, Vanquish Soul, Cash Tira with Theosis playing a Rise Heart, playing Rock of the Vanquisher. We even have room for Silvera and Subversion. What the heck? This mad lad just put together the tier list in one deck and uh, there you go, it did well. Good job. And then we have Doggy Da Boy, top four with Snake Eyes. Main decking Lullaby of Obedience, very nicely done. And then we have Vodka for free. 40 card tier limit. I can't believe you could fit just 40. Uh, wow, you did it. 40 cards. Well, we're not playing Max C. <laughs> Vodka for free. Maybe heard that I banned Max C or we're going to ban Max C and then showed up to this tournament without Max C. It's the next week. No, I, I know they know, but uh, there you go. Their deck is, they could play the same exact deck next week and it's the same thing, except maybe they don't want to play Ash. Ash is to negate Max C, so maybe it's less needed, right? So you're not gonna be pigeonholed into playing this. Maybe not even playing Call of the Grave, possibly. All right, good job, Vodka for free. And then we have Arca Delta. Arca, Maxi's a brick, of course. Arca Delta with another 45 card in for Noble. This is the way to play the deck. 
There is the extra deck. Good job to you. And then first place, pure cash Tira. The forbidden lance helped him win the duel because impermanence would have negated the Arise Heart. The Sarvis is a small world bridge and it's pretty much a forbidden lance. It negates impermanence or even effect Veiler. That's nice. So 40 card clean main deck. There is the extra deck. We have even have Galaxy Tomahawk. Galaxy Tomahawk with the Saryuja. Yeah, make the Tomahawk and then get drawn. So very well done. And there you go. That is the tournament with the new pack. Thank you for watching as long as you did. Comment, liking, and subscribing greatly supports the video. We are out.